Ali. Yeah, Europe, Europeans is like a snapshot through the different creations that have come up that I've come up with. So this one kind of shows off some of the the ankle trapping stuff you can do with a lapel. And Ollie, Ollie knows that the lapels are dangerous. You know, he's dealt with them for so many years now, and he knows what to do to stop the basic stuff. So you can't like you can't just keep using the same stuff and expect it to keep working because people develop defenses and understandings and. It's always e easier to defend a strong move than to come up with a new offensive one. So you have to be able to work from behind as the attacker and learn new stuff always because you can't count on it to work. But what happened here basically is he, he used a good defense to the worm guard by trying to pull his leg out. But I had a new little trick that I started doing when people did that. And so that little trick allows me to trap his, his leg completely and then immediately score with it and then move into the the lapel passing positions, which is on the lapel encyclopedia, chapter 14, platinum worm is what it's called. <laughs> and so believe it, like a lot of what I do, it looks super funky and it is, but it's actually part of something that makes sense when you, when it's actually explained to you. So you can see his ankles trapped yeah, that's horrible. by the lapel. Well, Ali's super flexible. Someone who's not as flexible as Ali, like it would have been more effective. It's just, he's so flexible that he can actually absorb so much of the power when I do this to people that are less flexible, it's like a free pass. But Ali is so like such a gifted athlete, and and he's a smart competitor too. So this was a, a really great test of if it even works. And this taught me a lot about like where I wanted to take the lapel passing in the future, because that's the, that's like my whole thing. It's like I want to try and make this stuff work in competition, and I want to try the new things and see if I can actually make it work against the best guys. But you'll see there's actually like grip switching going on. Like you can switch your grip and change sides and do a lot of the different passing st styles that you would do with conventional passing. But why wouldn't you want to trap someone's leg like that? Like you just killed their entire guard. So that's why people get lapel tunnel vision, wormhole vision. Is it's just like it's so effective if you can make it work. So you said... Uh... Lapel Encyclopedia, there's a passing section. Is is the Lapel Encyclopedia something that's grown? Because I don't remember that being on there when I first got oh, it. Oh, that's the whole thing, man. Lapel Encyclopedia is a constantly updated product. It's the only one on the market. No other Dude. instructional set updates chapters after you buy it. So you buy it once, and then you get access to all the new chapters. So as long as I continue working on lapel-based things, all of those creations go into the Lapel Encyclopedia for anyone who's ever bought it. So... I, I think we're going there. on like 15 chapters. Yeah, I gotta go up. So it was like six the, or seven. I think in the, yeah, originally there was like eight total, yeah. and we got it up to 15 now. We add new ones probably every two or three months. As quickly holding, as I can come up with a functional system. You're still holding his lapel, right? You still have his foot trap. Yeah, I'm pretty sure his ankle's still trapped. It's not something you can just free your leg. Yeah, it's still trapped there. If you're strategic about how you can t continue the passing, you can keep that leg trapped almost indefinitely. So my intention is just to pass repeatedly and then go back into his guard and then pass the guard again because he doesn't really have a guard. But there's a rule exploit you can use, just like that Umaplata reroll I was talking about, the infinite loop of the Umaplata reroll. Um, you can do that with passing too with the lapels because you trap someone's leg like that, it looks like they have a guard, but they actually don't. So you can just go back into their guard and then pass again super easily. And it's just a unique kind of sport exploit, which is why I call some of the, like what I do with the lapels, it's almost anti jujitsu because it's really effective at just beating jujitsu in sports. Like no one's arguing that you don't, you don't want to use a lapel guard in a self-defense situation. But if you're grappling someone who's really good at jujitsu and you do moves that they don't know, it's going to help you win. And so, yeah, I, I, at this point, I probably held it too long. Like, this is where it was starting to just burn out my grip to keep it. And I already scored quite a few points. It's a little blurry. I can't see the screen how many points I have. But you can see he really wants to get that leg back. And I'm really focused on trying to keep it and just grip switching and keep maintain those positions. And then he clears it finally, yeah. You're up 7-0 right now. Yeah, so I think I actually might get it again in this match. I'm not sure. Have you seen other people lapel passing, or is that something that you came up with on your own? Some some people have tried to do a little bit of lapel passing, I think, but I don't think anyone's formulated an actual like sequence that you can that you can replicate over and over again. 
And lapel passing is something... When did I even start doing it? I think I started doing it after I left Autos, so I don't think any of the Autos guys are even really aware of the full lapel passing stuff yet. Um, a long time ago, Mike Perez tried to show me a little lapel passing thing, but it was kind of a different concept. It's really the ankle trap that's really powerful, and then the, the other position that I used against Marigali, which is the basis of the entire passing position, is that grip. And then this is kind of like a secondary thing you can do that I did in this match. But it's a, it's just surprising how it's like such a funky looking thing, but it, it can be so structured. Like you can really just be like, oh yeah, when they do this, just change your grip like this, and then you do this. And it, like that's the beautiful thing about jiu-jitsu is you can just find all these undiscovered little pathways that are just so easy to replicate if you just know, if you just have the knowledge of how they work. And here Ali actually has my lapel underneath the leg. Yep. So this is a threat of him coming up and taking me down, and I'm just trying to control that bottom leg to keep him off uh, his knees. Because if he gets to his knees, he's just going to come up on this double. And he might do it anyways, because he's so powerful. Yeah, he's so, look how athletic and powerful. Like, the, he can just twist out of anything. And just, <laughs> yeah. Like, <laughs> why is he allowed to do that? I had him, like, fully <laughs> smashed out, twisted up, and he can just get up and take me take me over like that. Going into this match, the, the quarterfinal that set up this match was Mikey versus Ali. Did you have any preference on who you were going to fight in the semifinal? I would, I would ra way rather fight Ali. <laughs> yeah, because Mikey. yeah, Mikey's, I, I mean, Mikey's a lose-lose for you, right? Yeah, it's like, he's so good, he can beat me, sure. Yeah. But if I beat him, that people are still going to be like, dang, Mikey did so well, you know? I, yeah. it, it's lose-lose. I, I, would, I would love to train with Mikey. But the stress of competing against him would be pretty intense, <laughs> and I and it would just feel bad to like really have to try super hard. Like I never had any qualms against doing that against the meows because they were just it was such a intense rivalry back then that I could really go hard on them and not feel bad about it. But Mikey's such a sweet kid, and honestly, he he probably doesn't care. Like he wants to just fight hard too, yeah. you know. Like he'll 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 take it no problem. He's super tough, I'm sure. Speaking but it'd just be hard for me to get in that aggressive mindset versus Mikey. I'm not sure why. I, I'm not. I'm not one of those default aggressive guys. I yeah. have to really work up to it. Speaking of meows, so. shout out to the meows. Happy birthday to those guys. Had their birthday yesterday. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. How many? How many? How, how many times did you fight those guys? Nine times. Nine times total. Was it all at brown belt? Purple and brown. It was about five at each. Okay. Yeah. So. This is always the trickiest part of a match for me is when we reset and they get to put their lapels back in. This is like I have to I actually put a lot of thought into this exact moment every for matches. Like I really have to think about the strategy for this. So here you see I pull out the lapel quickly and I stopped I stopped trying to pull guard right away with the lapels. And that's like the real power of the, the lapel passing is I can be safe about pulling the lapel out because I there's no pressure to pull guard right away anymore. Because I have a strong passing position that no one knows about really. So if they pull and I have the lapel, it's still a good thing for me. Like, that's a good trade. And this is the actual system that I teach in the uh, Platinum Worm, is this grip si switching sequence. There's three grip, grip switches here. You can go to the right, and you can duck through to pass like this. And if they defend, there's a whole different grip sequence that you can go to the left that's almost equally unstoppable. I mean, that's that right there was just like old school pressure passing, but making it stronger with the lapel. Basically, it looked like, right? Basically, yeah. So what the lapel does is it weaves through their legs and creates this like pinning situation that pinches their knees together so they can't really shrimp or get their knees in place to do normal recoveries. It's just like it's like hog tying someone basically with the lapel as you do a basic pressure pass. So it's like a lot of the lapel, all it really is is just a, a way to in, reinforce traditional positions, you know? Aside from, like, the worm guard stuff and the squid guard stuff, like, that's a little bit more abstract and unique, I think. But a lot of the lapel passing, a lot of the closed guard stuff, it's just an additional tool that why wouldn't you use it? It's a, it's another tool. Yeah. It should be used. And, yeah, it's important to know how to do the basic thing, too. But if, if you're having trouble with the basic one, throw on a little extra power on it, you know? I'm not sure how I pulled off that second pass. I think that was just a normal knee cut. Yeah. Ali looks so That's tough to, to stick and to pin and get those three points, man. Yeah, there, there's a weird mental battle you have to get over with dealing with big guys when they play guard against you because it's like 
you're kind of afraid to use pressure against them because they are so strong. But usually pressure passing is the best option against a really strong explosive guy who's technical like Ollie. And I used to struggle with that a lot. A lot of times, like a few times when I fought him at, um, I think it was the ACB in Kazakhstan or something. He played guard against me for a second, and I was kind of hesitant to like use pressure and really go all out on it because I was worried he was just going to be able to bridge me over or something. But I remembered it and being like that. That was a that was a, a flaw that I had in my own mind. And so this match, I wanted to really try hard from pressure passing positions to really use my technique and see if I could stick him. And it kind of worked out. So I think it was a mental block for me. But yeah, at this point, it's like. That, that, that's one of the huge benefits of lapel. It's like if you get it early, you can rack up these crazy point leads. You get six just advantages by, too. Yeah, just with one grip, and it's like they spend half the match trying to like get out of this grip, and you're just racking up points and advantages along the way. And then now it's like, okay, now I have, I can work. You know, I can kind of relax. I can just kind of flow. I have a massive lead. Like this is the dream position to be in. It's just like, you're safe now. Just don't get submitted and continue trying to fight. It sounds like the Platinum Worm Pass and the Lapel Passing is sort of similar. Like, when I started playing with Lapel and Guard with your system, I loved it because it's like, you can attack while they have to worry about getting out of there. It seems like it's the same thing from passing, right? Yeah, I mean, that's just the that's the concept of tempo. I, you've probably heard me talk about that before. That before. It's just like, if you if you're attacking and being aggressive... And you're, and you're doing proper movements, so they actually have to respect your threat of the attack, they're forced to defend only. And so as long as they defend, that means you have an, another opportunity to attack. And when you in, involve the lapel in that, there's just very little opportunity for them to ever get an opportunity to even try anything offensive until they completely clear the grip. And so it kind of just affords you that ability to dictate the pace. And it doesn't always work. Like sometimes you can't get the lapel. Like, it, yeah. like if Ollie had just not let me get the lapel, this would be a totally different match. I don't deny that at all. Like, it would be significantly more difficult for me if I was forced to do normal jiu-jitsu against Ollie. I'm yeah. totally aware of that. <laughs> I, I, I get a lot of flack online sometimes. Like, people say, oh, Keenan at Purple Belt that, that wouldn't fight like this. Like, homie, this is not Purple Belt. This guy's a world champion black belt. And he's yeah. 260 pounds of pure, like, panther muscle. Like he, he, this guy could just launch me across the room. Like, I have to be so careful to win. Like, I, the, there's so much more going on here than people realize. Like, Purple Belt Keenan could not have beaten this guy. He could not have beaten Black Belt Ali. I hope you guys enjoyed that video. If you want to make sure to never miss the latest jujitsu technique uploads from this channel, hit the subscribe button and there's also a notification bell that you can ring to make sure that you get all the notifications for everything that we do here on the channel and bonus round.